Headlines most affecting Chilliwack this week. Council handing out cash to a couple of community events. She was an MLA here, now she wants the same job in Nanaimo. The pink pick apart car now has a new owner. And round one of the playoffs for the Chilliwack Chiefs will have that in sports. Our guests this week include Advantage Hope. We'll find out more about the Othello Tunnels as well as the Chilliwack Metropolitan Orchestra. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. The BC Human Rights Commissioner released a snapshot report on four communities they see as concerns, and Chilliwack was one of them. The focus was on racism and discrimination against migrant workers as well as the LGBTQ2S plus community. Now, it did praise local groups for trying to educate the public on these issues. The full report is on the Commissioner's website. Last week, Chilliwack City Council approving a couple of funding projects. Council approving the request for the Chilliwack Mural Festival Society. That was for $5,000. But the item that created controversy was $56,000 under the Community Development Initiatives Funding Policy. This for Ruth and Naomi's Downtown Cleanup Peer Employment Program. Now, nobody on council had a a problem with the program. But Councillor Bud Mercer, a former cop himself, noted that the garbage and the needles near the RAND mission was simply unacceptable. Now, that distracted the debate for a few minutes before before funding was actually approved. Gwen O'Mahony was the first NDP MLA in the area for the old riding of Chilliwack Hope. That was about 10 years ago, 2013-2014. Well, she has changed political stripes. The Conservative Party of B.C. announced O'Mahony as their candidate for Nanaimo Lanceville. She and her partner moved there a few years ago. She noticed that the current NDP is not the same party as the one she ran for years ago, thus the change. Provincial funding has been announced to help pay for student necessities like school supplies, school fees and class trips, as well as additional costs associated with joining a school sports team or, say, a music program. The support comes from the Student and Family Affordability Fund. It's being replenished with an additional $20 million this spring. So, the Chilliwack School District will receive $345,000. Fraser Cascade, $350,000. Trans Mountain Pipeline successfully completing the pipe pullback for what's called the Mountain 3 Horizontal Directional Drill. That's between Hope and Chilliwack in the Fraser Valley. The commencement date for the start uh, of the expanded system is May 1st. Now, Trans Mountain anticipates providing service for all contracted volumes within the month of May. Anastasia, co-founder of Kindred Cultures. We're thrilled to participate in the 2024 Rotary Climate Fair, as sustainability has always been and will continue to be a cornerstone of our business. At Kindred, we make super tasty probiotics. Our naturally fermented kefir water is blended with organic fruits and botanicals to make a light and effervescent, ready-to-drink beverage made with real food. Our caffeine-free offering is a great choice for everyone in the family. We strongly believe in doing well by doing good for ourselves, our families, our communities, and our planet. Can't wait to see you all there. The legend of the pick apart pink duster headed for the auction block back on April the 4th. And when the deal-in was done, thank you, Kenny Rogers, the car went for $9,200, actually 9250 Beekman Auctions matched that, so the total donation was 18500 to the Salvation Army of Chilliwack. Now, the owner is Brian Pauls with the Chilliwack Botanical Tulip Festival, and yes, it's going to be on display starting this weekend. Changes are coming to the parking at Sardis Secondary starting on the 15th, this to accommodate construction of the $40 million, 400-seat, two-story expansion of the school, so traffic along Stevenson Road is going to be impacted. Don't expect Rose or Jack or Celine Dion, Chilliwack Metropolitan Orchestra, presenting the Titanic commemorator, uh, commemoration concert on April the 27th at the Chilliwack Cultural Center. We'll have a conversation with some of the members of the CMO, and that's coming up in just uh, a few moments' time. As well, just a few weeks ago, word was out that restoration work for the Othello Tunnels and Coquihalla Provincial Park was ready for a partial opening this summer. So Sarah Brown and Richard Halby from Advantage Hope will be joining us to talk about the future of the tunnels and the park as well. So coming up, our interviews with the CMO, Advantage Hope, 
and then sports. Hey, there you are. I'm Steve. Come on into a sort of cycle. Chilliwack Restorative Justice repairs harm and prevention crime. For over 25 years, we have been supporting the community. We get used bicycle donations from you and are serviced by our experienced technicians. These bikes are awesome. Just look at them. From children's sets to adults and all styles of colors. Making them totally affordable. We're proud to be of service for our community, and our bike program allows opportunity for that, either through donation or through buying one of our amazing bikes. Come by and take a look. This week continues and we're going to have a ton of fun here with the Chilliwack Metropolitan Orchestra. They're going to do something very cool with Titanic. Now, before you think Rose and Jack and Celine Dion, there's no Rose, there's no Jack, and there's no Celine Dion. Now, uh, Ann Fleming, Madison uh, Maley, Paula Quirk, and uh, Nigel Plumley, who is the CMO president, so we've got to be nice to him, he's paying the bills. So tell me how this is going to work. This is what, a commemorative concert it of is. the actual event of the Titanic? It is, it indeed, is. Yeah. yes. It was the brainchild, actually, of Anne. She's been wanting to do this for ages. And Since we finally <laughs> got the whole thing together. Because a lot of people were very negative about it to start with. But it's happening, and it's going to be in three weeks' time, 27th of April, at the Chilliwack Cultural Centre. So, so we're very excited. Why the controversy, though? Was it, was it because it wasn't Jack, it wasn't Celine Dion, was it? It was different, I think. Okay. And initially, the music, finding the scores was a real issue because I thought we could do the Andy Gibb, you know, from the Bee Gees. Okay. He actually wrote the score. He was a classical musical composer. I didn't composer, know that. And he wrote the score for the 100th anniversary in 2012. Right. Uh, he passed away. He didn't see it yeah. play, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But um, I couldn't find the score. I went to the London Symphony people. They couldn't find it. So I said, okay, we'll have to find an alternative. So we ended up with the Horner Suite, which is the one from the movie, which right. is the top-selling score um, in the world, you know, of all Ooh. time. Movie it's, score. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I've got to ask, because of the Andy Gibb connection, Madison, are you going to be doing... Uh, any Andy Gibb, or is this strictly classical? <laughs> There's a part of the piece that everyone would know well, but a lot of it's on vocalese, and it's it's beautiful. It's outstanding. Uh, was it a challenge for you, uh, or as a soprano, it just went, oh, I can I can do this. I, I um, have been practicing for a little bit now, but it it sounds beautiful, and it wasn't too too challenging. But I think when it all comes together with the choral piece and the orchestra. And then my solo part, I think it will. Um, so when we walk in now, you mentioned the, the, the choral. Uh, yeah. How many people are we going to see on stage? Oh, anywhere between 20 and 25. So it's going to be busy. Oh, it's going to be, a, yeah. The, the, uh, the challenge will be finding where to place us. That's right. We have five yeah. percussionists for this. Oh, that's going to be cool. It's going to be a huge orchestra. Uh, uh, is there a visual component to this? Because uh, obviously, again, don't expect Rose. Don't expect no. Jack. There no. is actually, actually uh, Wayne, that's Anne's husband, they put together an amazing visual for that one particular piece, the Boyer piece. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, depicting the Titanic from its construction stage right to the actual sinking. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's, it's all familiar. coordinated actually with the, with the music. So it's really quite it's impressive. It's a tone poem. It's not your typical type of classical new. This is not a classical concert. Yeah. Um, it, it takes percussion instruments and they're all, it's the rivets being pounded in, it's the ship going down the spillway into the, okay. into the harbor. You hear all these instruments being played. We have a water gong, which is <laughs> incredible. It's this, oh. this big Tim Tam, it's a gong, and it comes in and out of this water bath on police. So we're having Whilst to build it. Whilst vibrating. Yes. Oh, yes, so it's going, okay. it's quite something. And uh, I actually contacted uh, the composer 
And uh, Peter Boyer, he, he replied to me, I was so impressed. He is in the middle right now, or he has finished probably, yeah. the commemoration for the coronation of King Charles III. So this fellow, when he was 25, he's way ahead of his time. Yeah. This is, the orchestra has really enjoyed doing this piece. It's quite different. <laughs> so it's April the 27th, it's a 7.30 start uh, at the theater, at uh, the Cultural Center, and uh, so $35? General admission? For adults and then uh, students and seniors of 30. We've kept the price really low um, so everyone can come. Thank you guys so much for coming in. This is going to be a fun show. Thank you. It's Titanic. Tickets are available through the CMO website. You're watching this week. This week continues and we are talking about something that a lot of people have been holding their breath on and that's the Othello Tunnels, that's Coquihalla Provincial Park. What's happening? Is it going to be open? And uh, Richard Helby and uh, Sarah Brown uh, with Advantage, how is it again? Advantage Hope. And, and Tourism Hope, Hope Cascades Cascade. and Cannons. Yeah. yeah. We'll get it right. Now, a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, uh, out of the blue, it seemed, BC Parks uh, made the announcement that there's a partial reopening. When did you guys find out when the green light was on that we can actually start opening this up? Because it's been, what, two and a half years since the atmospheric river? Right, yeah. So since the 2021, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, it was kind of unfortunate. The park was closed in 2020 uh, due to concerns about COVID and crowding in right. parks. And then it reopened in 2021. And so it was really exciting, you know, get people back in the park. We had a bunch of photography done at that time. And then the atmospheric river came that November yeah. and a lot of destruction happened in that park and it's been closed ever since. Uh, we had been kind of fishing to see if we could get any information because we published our visitor guide magazine in March and it was mm -hmm. like, you know, if we know it's going to open, we're going to want to say, and we heard a little bit of stay tuned for an announcement, but not really what it was. So we were uh, on pins and needles, just kind of the same, I think, as everybody else to hear the announcement and really, really happy for, for the community of Hope and for railway enthusiasts and everybody yeah. who likes to go out there, movie fans, so many movies have been filmed out there. Yeah. Uh, this is a really, a really good time for, for us. And we like to thank you, everybody that was involved, right, behind the scenes, and also the mayor and other, the park, BC Parks, right. because it was an effort from everybody, right? So that's something that uh, we were expecting, and also the BC, the whole BC because it's uh, important since 1914 when it was built, mm -hmm. right? There's lots of history there, scenic, right? So we are inviting people to come back there and enjoy again in July, right? And what? I think public interest in the park as well, in Hope and in other areas, yes. is one of the things that's really helped move this along. So also thank you to people in, you know, people who are watching that continued interest in this park is one of the reasons that things are continuing yep. forward. Uh, also local angling groups, a lot of angling groups helped to clean out the river after the flood because there's a salmon uh, pass through area there. Yeah. Uh, and there was a lot of debris, things like cars, and things like that that had wound up in the river and a lot of that was cleaned up by those groups. One thing, we were talking about this off camera, uh, we still don't know how much material, so that's, that's still being evaluated of how much had to be pulled out and still what has to be done, because it's just what, one or two of the tunnels open now? The first two. Yeah, first. first two, okay. And we're shooting for what, a June date or? Uh, July. July, yeah. okay. We've heard early July, but not a specific date. I think some of that's going to depend on when some of the rock fall and next summer, next year, summer, 2025, uh, we are expecting to have all of them open, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we've got to do a shout out of something that uh, Brian McKinney has always talked about uh, over the last couple of weeks, and that's the new signage around Hope. Uh, so whose baby was that? Was that yours? That was mine, <laughs> yes. Uh, so we received a grant from Syrup, which I think is Canadian Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program yeah. in 2020. Uh, to put gateway signs 
in hope it was part of a program to increase tourism post COVID. Of course we were thinking post COVID, but this is still right in the middle of it. Um, and we found, you know, a lot of the communities in the Fraser Valley, if you're driving through, you saw Chilliwack, Abbotsford, you see these really nice signs. And then in Hope, we had one and it was quite dated. And there's a lot of weird exits where you don't really know where you're going if you're not familiar with the area. Yeah. And so being able to say, you know, we're open and we want people to come to Hope and we've got this fresh new look for Hope. We installed uh, six gateway signs as part of this plan. Uh, and so there's now uh two signs indicating silver creek which didn't have adequate signage previously uh a sign that points downtown on sixth avenue uh and replaced the x sign at exit 170 and the one at fraser avenue coming in from the fraser canyon yeah what we want to achieve there it is if you haven't been there or you only you were there only to put your gas hope it has lots to offer right mm -hmm. hiking biking fishing beautiful well, nature there's a there very large yeah. um nice park in our downtown yes. that yeah. it's if you're just driving through old hope yeah. princeton way there there's no real indication that it's there so yeah these, we want uh, to invite you to come <laughs> check there's the plug right? you, you you can still fill your tank right your gas tank but there's <laughs> lots to see and to enjoy uh so i guess we're still waiting for that that actual date for the othello tunnels just i guess follow your social media yeah, yes. so HCC Tourism on Facebook uh, or Tourism HCC on X or uh, TikTok. Yeah. Sarah, Richard, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. Thank You're you. watching this week. Chill Sports, Chilliwack Chiefs started round one of the BCHL playoffs with a Langley Riverman. Four games later, the Chiefs swept them. So now they got to wait for any other series to finish just to find out who they're going to play in round two. So stay tuned. Opening night for Agassi Speedway is May the 11th. Rick Rogers with the track will be here in a moment to talk about the new season and some incredible changes and additions at the track. Both Chilliwack FC and Chiacton FC holding their orientation camps for young soccer players. The weather held off for players and parents. There are a number of soccer options for youth, so go to their respective social media for more details. Football season not that far off. Over the weekend, Chilliwack Giants holding their first practice of the year for aspiring quarterbacks and receivers. That was at Stito's school. Registration for Adam, Pee Wee, and Bantam start this week. Coming up, our interview with Rick Rogers and then Kerry with the weather. This week continues with Rick Rogers of Agassiz Speedway, and we're getting ready for the season. Although the season kind of sorty is about to start. There's, there's what, two sets of, of races? One's the Speedway and one is another sponsor? Or how's this going to work? Or Well, the season starts May 11th yeah. with the Mel Powers Classic, as yeah. it always does. Um, and uh, this year we have a... Uh, a new class of car that's racing, and it's the Bold Connections Drift Alliance. Mm -hmm. uh, they've invested in the Agassiz Speedway as a sponsor uh, to actually pave the infield of the track that will allow them to have multiple course designs to race on the inside of the track and on the outside of the oval of the track. It's quite a, an opportunity for that community. It's a, we're reaching out for a different brand of racer to keep racing alive mm -hmm. in, the, in the valley and they have a great amount of people that are going to come to do it now we have made this arrangement with them that uh, for the next four years they'll have 15 events at the agassiz speedway as well as 15 events for the uh, for our members uh, some days will be on the sunday after our saturday race but 10 of those races will be rain or shine throughout the year um, as a matter of fact, they race in December, January, oh, you know, wow. all the, all the funny weather yeah. days and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal amount of, uh, racing and action that's going to happen at Agassiz Speedway this year. So Agassiz is actually going to become a bit of a road course as well as the Oval. It can, we can have enduro races, cars that can turn left or right can now, uh, come in and out of the track. Of course, they'd have to pit outside in the, in our parking areas and then come into the track yeah. and race. Um, but we've, we've invested a lot in the track this year. As a club, we've we've uh, we put in two new uh, 150 or 150 seats um, okay. uh, bleachers that we've acquired and and put in. We've uh, increased the fencing area. Uh, our extreme seating still there, of course, but we've added the seats. We've uh, also um, 
um, did a lot of work as far as uh, promoting. We've got a new web page that's come up um, that we've invested in and, and tried to modernize and keep it up to speed and stuff. So, but again, I thank you for having me here oh, to welcome. promote the Speedway. It's, it's uh, you know, we're looking forward to a fantastic year. And for those who don't know, it's been around 50, I don't 50, years. 50, I think it's, this year is 54. 54, because it started yeah. off as Kent. Yeah. And then became Agassiz. Um, and I know pre-COVID there were a number of concerts to go with uh, uh, the races um, are you going to be able to. I know you were able to bring in. Uh, was it the Bluegrass? The Bluegrass Festival. Yeah, yeah it was on short notice, but yeah. we got it done. It was a terrific success. Um, I'm thinking that they were going to probably want to come back okay. uh, because you know it was a great working relationship with them, and and hopefully that sort of thing can continue. Um, but we've added uh, the the facility as you've seen it before. You've yeah. been there. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's nestled in the mountains, uh, a great view of Mount Sheehan. Um, you know, the facility is w extremely well maintained, well run. Uh, we've built, uh, invested in a new uh, 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 snack, uh, snack shack, or should we call it concession? Concession, yeah. Down in the pit area for our drivers. Oh, okay. So we're giving back a bit to right. our drivers. Um, but we've also invested, of course, in the internet and as far as our web page is concerned. We've invited a couple more classes of cars to race with this year. One of them as well, um, a new addition is called the uh, a touring uh, division is the Northwest Sprint Car Tour. Um, one of our club members, uh, Aaron Willison, just came off a huge victory down in Las Vegas last December. Um, and he is one of the top drivers in North America in this type of car. There are 800 horsepower wind sprint cars that will do 11 seconds around our quarter mile oval track. He was lucky enough to bring home a $50,000 US prize, one of the richest nice. richest events that have ever been done. Um, he's going back again in November, November or December again of this year. This time it's in um, down in uh, in. Uh, California or out it's in a different racetrack this year but uh, you know hopefully we're hoping for the best for him again because he's a local driver he's a local but that car you can see at our track you can can't imagine the popularity of how how fast these cars go and the excitement and the noise and stuff so you know with those and the drifters and our, of course our regular classes and you know you, you can't get these cars without the drivers and these guys are fantastic yeah. drivers every single one of them from the entry levels to the to the pro levels can't beat them you know it's exciting as heck the fun starts at Agassiz Speedway and, and that's uh, our tag. That's the, the tag here. Uh, and uh, ticket information is all up uh, on the website. All on the well. website again for fifteen dollars, Don. You can't get a better deal. And we haven't parking, by we, the way. Oh yeah, we haven't raised our par our prices at all. Yeah. And uh, parking's all free. Yeah. There's a campground right there that you can stay in and enjoy your time. Um, we have again, we have a full concession area. We have uh, plenty of seating. Um, extreme seating area it's just a great place to be if you're a shutter bug if you love photography the extreme seating area is a must just saying Rick Rogers uh, we'll definitely have you back on during the season thanks again well we hope to get you in a car out there one day Don, and, you know, I'm getting a little enjoy. old for that but that's okay yeah it, it's gonna be a lot of fun it'll be a lot of fun we hope to see you out there and uh, enjoying yourself thanks Rick and you're watching this week thank you Chill weather. So, carry short sleeve weather this weekend? Hey, Chilliwack. Weather next week is looking pretty good. This weekend, temperatures are going to get up to about 16 degrees, down to about 4 in the evening, so still a little chilly. With temperatures next week arranging between 12 and 14, worst chance of rain is going to happen on Monday with 5.5 millimeters of rain being called for. Fun fact, the Ford Mustang is turning 60 on April 17th. Pretty cool. First came out and cost $2,378. Back to you, Don. Thanks, Carrie, and thank you for watching. If you have a local news story you'd like to report on, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great weekend. I'm Don Lane.